Meet Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah that's what he's saying. Yo, we want to burn one. No. Yeah. This is Mary Jane. Meet her. Say hello to her. Shake her hand. <laughs> that night it was nice to meet you. Ever since lit team, my life was sweeter. Loved your fragrance, liked your features. Everybody hit it. I don't wife the freak up. Getting niggas hit. I don't wife the beater. For your comfort, when I like my reefer. Shared dreams, some blue ones. Even shared queens, some rude ones. Nights all over my roof, hun. Or city view days, getting cold sun. I'm a cold sun. And your earthly presence always stayed there. When you hurt me, stress and consoled me. All laid out and paid out. When work be stretching, it ain't a bad thing when we break up. See your face on each and every wake up Fuck around and might just hook a steak up Gold bars like Fort Knox, you help just blaze up Our first hour night was a scary game Stuck on the couch, every every rain But an epiphany clearly came Off the walls, I will save you, Mary Jane I'm P. Easy Parker That good weed, no CD Sparker Got a hold of my old bleedy heart QT under trees in the park We rolling, rolling, puffing, puffing Always smoking something Might just step out where that lies Yeah, and still you know it's nothing Yeah, granddaddy wasn't hazy enough With the purple labels, I'm wavy as fuck I met a white widow, she gave me a touch Green with envy, y'all related, that's nuts I got some flavor that's tough though About to get bucked like a snub nose About to get bucked like a snub nose Bad bitch, I kick it wet like a stub toe Crazy shake, one of them club hoes I shit kinda open, you know how I love goes She's popping and she's with it Get it popping, damn she's thick. Bend over, get hands free in it Let her get a little taste can't be timid, brag about her shit tight and dick. I'ma holla at you when Let I get out of these cheeks. I love you, okay? I love it. I'm telling you, I love it. I love it. I love it. Half big, you know what I'm saying? I love it. Top five. <laughs> Shout out to Be Easy for the intro song once again, you know what I'm saying? But not as much as I know. Yeah, I heard it on episode 190. We're going to keep it rolling. I think that's going to be the theme song for this um, segment of the Don Core. And D Reek and Hippie presents The Smokers. The Smokers. Welcome back yeah, to episode yeah, two. Episode two. two. What's going on, Don Cole? The same old thing. Work, work, work. More work. And it's the most uh, busy week in my life, man. And I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm loving it. I'm loving the no sleep. I'm loving the. Get up and get to it, man. You know? Yeah. Well, as y'all see it, we back at SG Media. You know what I'm saying? The so, home base. Shout out to everybody here once again. And um, we back perfect, at it. That's a perfect song for this uh, segment. Yeah. Perfect intro song. Yeah, I like it. I think we're going to keep that. Stick you know with I mean? it. Stick, Stick with, it. with it. See what the people think about it. But uh, for all the new listeners, everybody just like, share, subscribe, comment. You know LCS, what I mean? LCS, LCS, yeah, like, especially comment. Especially to this new segment. This subscribe. is episode two of The Smokers. So, um we just going to grab a couple topics that we couldn't touch on on episode 190. Protect yourself. Protect self. Go uh, watch the episode. We just yeah, put that up yeah, yeah. Like, on our channel. Uh, comment, and it'll be up on this channel up. soon. Yeah. So, um, let's see where I wanted to go with it. I wanted to go. Let me see. Lil Baby. Lil Baby? Yeah, Lil Baby said that he considers himself the Lil Wayne of this generation. Thoughts? Mm, um, this is, that's a strong statement. It's a very strong statement, but if anybody from this generation could say that, I would think it would be Lil Baby. You think it could be him? He said Lil Baby, right? Lil Baby, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about so the baby later on. I, I think um, he's remaining himself, mm -hmm. and at the same time, he has a very strong influence over the youth. And not just the youth, but kind of like um, his age group. Yeah. And a few older, you know, so. You, you think even like music-wise, sonically, like lyrically and everything like that? And his mm. output in music, like the output that he puts out into the you, industry you right mean, now? You mean just his sound, not his material? Because I'm not going to compare that. All of it like together that. because he compared himself to a well, goat. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, still, it's also still early. For Lil Baby. It's mm -hmm. still early in his career, so I could see where that, that comparison at um, Lil Wayne's, at Weezy's point in his career. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I could see him saying that, but... Um, yeah, I kind of disagree with him a my opinion, bit. My opinion, if you ask me mine, I just don't like when people... Like, let, let, the, um, let the tabloids and, and the media... Make that comparison. Don't be you. 
You don't like people that crown themselves? We're about to go He's not to crowning him. himself. He, he putting himself in somebody else's lane. So you don't like somebody that bigs themselves just, up? Just be Lil Baby. You don't hear Lil oh. Wayne doing that. Lil Wayne said, I'm the best rapper alive since the best rapper retired. Yeah. You know? So, and he, that was a statement. Like, mm-hmm. and that's before his run. Yeah. Like, remember he said that? We always looking at the TV like, why the fuck he say that? Yeah, well. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why he? But then that's when he started and dropping he all his mixtapes and everything like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's so why now, I hope to see that type of um, trickle down effect with uh, little baby after he says something like this. I hope to see more consistency from him. Oh, he's been consistent. Even though I feel like, well, last year was his features year. Like he ain't really dropped nothing. Last year was just when he dropped a lot of features. My that turn was the year out, before yeah, that because nothing came out last year. My turn was the year before that. And I think that album was decent. It just ran through last year because nothing else was going on. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to see more. But he dropped the joint with Lil Durk, didn't he? We ain't, we ain't really like that. That was Lil, that was Lil Baby and Lil Durk? That was Lil yeah, Durk. Yeah, yeah. That was. It was the Littles. It was cool, but again, it was that that album was stagnant. It was stale. You know what I'm saying? Like after the three, after the first four songs. It all sounded the same. I know what this gonna sound like. Yeah. So, for me, for my end, I just felt like I disagreed with him with that statement. Maybe take a little more time. You know what I'm saying? Because what you did from the beginning to now to that statement is not enough. It's not that amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get that you getting money and all that, and that probably is the meter of success for certain of these dudes. You know what I'm saying? But. That's not all it is like, and I respect his um, I respect his lyricism. I think he's I think he's a rapper's rapper. You know what I'm saying? The, but the question I asked you before um, we we move forward would be: Are you comparing what he says to uh, Lil Wayne's career in total? Um, like, are you comparing it, or you do you? I feel like he just looked at it like. You know, I have my trajectory can reach, you know, that type of stardom. Yeah, like how they be telling, like, Luca could be like LeBron type shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're not like, talking about right, right now. They're talking, talking about, about the right projection now, of it. Yeah. yeah and That's why I say I only, like, somewhat I, disagree with the statement. Besides the money that's being made with these artists now, which is great. I don't see too much of a difference besides Wayne coming from uh, the high boys and cash money and having that backing. But you got to remember, Juvenile and BG was really moving them units over there yeah. for yeah. Wayne. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense. I'll tell you, when Wayne took off and caught all that, it was like, whoa. It, it, a lot of people ain't see that. Women like him, little yeah. Wayne. You know, the girls like them. Yeah. But it's a drop it like it's hot kid. And then he started to take off my black. My black is out. People wasn't really like, yo, he the best. Or thinking about that. Nah, that Nobody came, was thinking about that. Yeah, I think that came with uh, Carter. The first yes. One. And so, then after that was that. Right, so I can so, give him that. Yeah, wait I would t- like to see. T- wait till you get a nice ghostwriter. Yeah, I would like to see more That's of Baby go. being consistent and like a classic album from him. You know what I'm saying? Because I listen to his albums. Because I like, because he's one of those, what you call, you still call him mumble rappers? Or uh, he's I never one of call those, a little baby a mumble rapper. He one of them rappers that started like that, that you could hear his words. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I could understand everything that he's saying. So I'm just waiting to see you live up to what you're saying about yourself now. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I understand so, that. Yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up because we couldn't bring it up on the last episode and I wanted to talk on that and dive into it a little bit because I think that comment is is big because for Wayne to say I'm the greatest rapper since the greatest rapper retired, you know what I'm saying, and live up to it, you got to live up to what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So True. Wayne also said that on the track, though. But when did he say that? I'm just saying he said he made that statement on a track. Yeah, and Baby's just saying it. Just, just saying, saying it. it, yeah. It's a difference. Cuz nobody asked him and I think he just said it, you know what I'm saying? Like he was in a uh he was in a magazine, he was had an interview and somebody asked him how he felt about his career. He was like, "I feel like I'm the Lil Wayne of this generation." Okay. 
But I don't know how true that is. You know what I'm saying? But let's go into um. I wanted to talk about this. It's a it's an interesting story to me because I always thought about this part of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Shorty from um uh, her name is Jody Turner Smith from um Queen and Slimming. Queen Slim. Slim. Yeah, I mean, you messed me up. Slimming Queen and Slim. Yeah, you saw that movie? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. she proposed to Joshua Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know who Joshua Jackson is, right? Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask you how you feel about women proposing to their man. Why you be asking me these questions? No, I, feel, no, I mean, no, just relax. Just relax. Why you be trying to put me on the spot? But I'm gonna answer it. No, I'm but not. I I, it's it's not doing. putting you on the spot. It's doing. me and you but that's I'm talking. I'm <laughs> that's it. You know what I'm saying? How do I feel about it? Like I don't. I feel like. Is I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That's mm-hmm. what I'm going to say first. Mm-hmm. If if it's a lot of aggressive females out here, man. 2021 is different. Yeah. And um it's a lot of it's a lot of sensitive dudes out here, you know? So you got to wait and you, you hesitate and she back you in the corner. And <laughs> yeah. Yo, what's up? And you don't handle that the right if you say yes, man. That's, that's what, what you, he said. He said they was at a... It sounded like he was telling, too. Like, he was nervous. He was scared. Yeah, because they it was at a... It was at on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And he was a little tipsy. And he was like, oh. Oh. He said yes, though. <laughs> what you... You gonna say no there? I'm gonna tell you, get up, queen. I mean, yeah, I, we queen. don't know if she got down on one knee or anything. Well, if she did Well, how how is going? You just like, yo, <laughs> marry me. You want to marry me? I think it's just, yeah, it's just that like, you, they do it just like how we bro, would think I of think, doing it. Like, and you make an intimate setting, they probably was sitting at dinner or something. And got on one knee. That's, no. a, that's a proposal to me. I mean, but that's just the way that we was. My grandmama told me if you propose to a woman, you make sure you get on one knee. Mm-hmm. Well, then that's the man. So what does a woman do? Because I don't, this, I've this seen instance them get on is, one knee. This instance is her bro, proposing to him. Bro, they get on one knee. It's 2021. Look it up on YouTube. There's plenty of it. I mean, yeah, I've seen it before. Okay, so don't act like you don't know. But the, the, the Get up, queen. Okay, so that's how you going to go about it? I don't, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying yes. I'm traditional. I'm old school still. Like I'm. <sighs> so you couldn't see you. So you would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't succumb to that. But I don't see anything. You would hope with. that it would be in an intimate setting, so you could say, explain that to her. Like, yo, let me uh, propose. No. To you that um. Way. First of all, me. Yeah. That's what that's, I'm asking. That's already spoken about beforehand. Yeah. That's a conversation that's already spoke about before we even in a relationship. Yeah. See a lot of people don't be doing this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's already put out there. No, but but then again, we at an age where you gotta have these conversations. So yeah, a lot of people don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You but I any- think I think it's dope for a woman to ask their it's, man that's amazing. for their hand in marriage because sometimes the man wants to but he's hesitant and he's scared of certain shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh da, 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 whatever. But and, and if you feel it, Love like that for your woman, and she asks you for your hand in marriage. Let I would ask, hope. Let me ask you this: it. If she asks and he says yes, but he was hesitant beforehand, is what would change? Nothing. He was just. Wait, did he do it because nothing? Because it goes wait, wait, the same let way. Let me ask you: is he, What? You scared he was gonna lose her? Like if he say no, she gonna leave? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Damn! I just went through this shit. Recently. Now if he, now if he cheat, right? Is it the same? Like, like I if mean, if he cheat because, like, you talking about if she asked him for a marriage, right, and he hesitate, but he said yeah. Like, no, 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 I'm going off what you said. Like, a lot of men want to get married, but they be nervous, and then they go shorty, like, I right, get on one knee or whatever, propose it, or however she do it, got a plane flying across the sky, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, all right. And you like, you like. Well, I'm supposed to say, like you just said to me, right? What you going to tell her? No, I'm going to tell her, get up. Let's go. Like, Because no, for me, in my last thing, in my last relationship, Bruh. I wanted to get married to that person, right? But I was 
nervous on how they felt about it. Even though we had the conversation, you know what I'm saying, about how both of us felt about marriage, mm-hmm. I didn't know if she would have accepted it at the time that I wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because you had a conversation. Yeah, because we had the conversation. And at the same time, the way the the way the relationship was moving, it made me hesitant to right. do it. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, so, damn, I'm stuck in a rock. Right. You know I mean? Okay. So things got better, right? And while yeah, things are rocky and you want this, but y'all already had this conversation, then she just proposed and to you. That on your person bir- proposed to she me? proposed to you on your birthday in front of all of us. You like, yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this shit about me? Yeah. What? Yo, this is why 75% of marriages fail. What you mean? She has a conversation with you prior to it. Y'all already going through it. And then because you want to get married, but, but you know, mm-hmm. you know, shit ain't right. Y'all ain't working that out. And yeah, she might not really want this right now, but I want it. And she asking but me. But she's asking me. But then why that's are you the flip, asking me? That's the flip side of when men ask women and then they do some stupid shit and the marriage is like, why did you ask me to marry you? Because you wanted me to. You wanted it and I didn't I didn't want to lose you. Well <laughs> Yeah, but well, you know the situation that I was in. I'm, I'm, so, and I'm just speaking in general. Yeah, but, but that's, that's why, why a lot you know of this, shit is like so that. So I would say, yeah, because we both wanted that and she felt like I know why he's nervous too so let me show this commitment part you know what I'm saying let me show that I'm willing to go all the way so I would have I would say yeah because I even have the conversations with y'all behind you know what I mean and then two months later what shit is crazy <laughs> that's just how shit is and because it only it only take you go down to the municipal building get your license you get that shit 24 hours and you could get married the next day and yeah I'm not mad at it I just and then the three days later you fighting or you can't hear from her then what that's why shit don't be working out cause people but get married but then sometimes that's the vibrations cause that's people, all you thinking this negative married. shit gonna happen no people get married because of self and you still be going through issues in your relationship People don't get past shit in a relationship and they get married because... Yeah, because for me, I'll be getting in my own way. For me, I'll be getting right. in my own way. So before you even deal with self and your relationship issues, how can you take a legal bond together? Yeah, if y'all can't even communicate on a regular basis. <sighs> ah, come on. But that's why, like, this story, I don't know why it spawned off to our shit. You know what I'm saying? But... This story was dope to me because I it probably it feels like she was that for him, you know what I'm saying? And she felt that way, and they both felt that way. And I don't think they said he hesitated. You said no. You I'm said not what if that. he did? What if he did? Uh, I don't think he did. I think he was like hell yeah. He was twisted. I think he was hype. Yeah, I think like, he was yeah. hype. <laughs> so let's get into this last topic, man. Oh, um, the baby. Show. The baby. Yeah, you seen what's happening with him recently? He always playing the victim. What you think about that? They do. They do a a, a puma. Yeah, cause he said, "If you a fly nigga like me, put your middle fingers in the air. If you smoking weed like me, put a finger in the air. But if you sucking dick in the parking lot and you a dude, you can leave." That's what he said. Yeah. And somebody threw. So somebody threw a shoe at him, and then posted this this shit. One shoe on and one shoe off and say it wasn't me and posted it on Twitter. <laughs> but, and then he gets on his Instagram in the morning, you know, they twisting my words like they always do. Like, yo, bro, he get on my nerves sometimes, bro. Like, everything that he goes through, and he goes through a lot of shit since he got into the game. He always plays the victim to me. He played the victim when he shot them niggas, too. Yeah, he played the victim when he slapped the I mean, attendant at the Walmart. He was the victim in the shootings. We're not going to act like that. I mean, yeah, niggas came up. Mm, don't come around me like that. But I'm saying, like, this shit that he goes through with his fans, that's different. That's street shit. You know what I'm saying? Do you think it's uh, good or bad publicity? I think it's bad. 
Really? Even though all publicity is good publicity. I always but tell you this. When you behind your security and you walking out of a club and a female got her phone in your face and you smack fire out her. And what happened with that? Nothing. I'm not condoning it, but. I'm not condoning it either. Nothing happened over that. She probably sued him or whatever, but we don't get the end of these stories. You know what I'm saying? We never he, get the full. lose female following? It's following continues. But of course not, nah. Because you got yeah, you right? got sheep that follow you. Everybody out here are sheep. I mean, the sheep are growing. Um, and then he brings out. Yeah, that's what I thought you was going to And then he I brings out Tory Lane. Well, we're going to bring that in there, too. He brings out Tory Lanez during his performance. After Megan got off stage. Yeah, and he supposedly fucked with Megan. Like, the, you my sister and all this other shit. But you thought of that though. I think he one of them artists that used the like we was talking about with Joe Buttons that still use the entertainment factor of things. Like he has to make a spectacle everywhere he goes. He has to make some sort of thing to keep his name rolling. And now I, I just think that that gets you in trouble in this game. You know what I'm saying? Because then you're gonna do the wrong thing. Like everything not gonna be self defense when you shooting at everybody or smacking everybody, bro. Just because your name is the baby. True. Oh, maybe I'll be thinking about shit just too many layers deep, right? Maybe he knew already that Megan would be performing before him, right? Yeah. That's his friend? Mm-hmm. Well, he claims, yeah. Listen. Mm-hmm. It also is the assumption that Tori shot her, right? Yep. What's been happening with that? Nothing. They still the case is ongoing. I guess is in trial or whatever. Right? Yes, I, I don't know. I think it's traveling around the country. And yeah, it happened last year. Something. What if two what years if ago what now. if it ain't happened the way that they, he found out it ain't happened the way it's portrayed? What with if he know the truth? Yeah, yeah. But why I still fuck with both of them? Because he a mixy nigga, bro. Yeah, but everything like you saying, I think everything is a setup, like. Everything is promotion. You know what I mean? Yes. So, like you saying, I know that she's going to be performing before me, so let me do this at the end of my performance. Bring him out in the pool shiesty doll shit. Mm-hmm. And then bring him out. I don't know. And then I just feel like he always plays the victim when he does certain shit. And it's like, I don't, I'm, I, I've am i been tired of it since You thought that was corny? Yeah. Trying to bring Tory Lanez out? Um... I don't like the song that they got together. And yeah, I think that's corny. Like, just do your thing, bro. Like, like you saying, he mixed it. He trying to get into shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's no shit. need to do all that. You know what I'm saying? But that's who he is, though, bro. Excuse me. That's who he is. Mm. He walked around South by Southwest with a diaper on, bro. Nothing but a diaper. Before anybody knew who he was, so... He's going to always try to push the envelope. He didn't shot people and got away with this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I'm going to do next? Slap this girl for no reason. Just because she was recording me. What next? He beat up a promoter. Uh, yeah, so I don't pay attention to him no more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's my boy. The baby cool. <laughs> you got any topics that you wanted to talk on in this segment today? Um, I wanted to keep. I, I just wanted to keep it on those three topics. I ain't really have too much more. I don't but if think you got so. something else that we could so, talk about, because what I really want to talk about, I don't feel like getting flagged because this was a nice little segment. And I think what you want to talk about? Um, I guess this shutdown vaccine bullshit. Okay. Like part two is happening again. I don't know what's going they on. They said the CD, the CDC, the on. CDC said complete reversal. Everybody should be wearing masks again, indoors and everything. What, what, what like I that. said, bro. What I said. What you said, bro. This shit has been yo. It's only about to be August. This shit opened up last month. It felt like forever, right? It was June. Yeah, but I mean, we it was moving like it was open. Everybody nah, was moving see, like everything was see, open. You gotta though. stop that. People was moving like that prior to, prior to. But once people not in New wait, York. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, I'm talking about here. I ain't. I ain't talking about anywhere. I'm talking about my home. Mm-hmm. As soon as people was fully vaccinated, you could be out here in groups 
of fully vaccinated people, right? Yeah. Come on, son. No, but you kind of fucked that. No, for a whole year, New York was goddamn zombie land, bro. Like, it, okay, and it then was shut down. Okay, I'm talking about right now. That's last year when it was shut down, right? Yeah, I'm talking about right now. So what is it? The the variant, the the Delta the variant is the fucking vaccine, bro. The the Delta is no. the new oh. one that they calling. What's, so what's your thoughts about it? What you want to say about it? You think it's I bullshit? Think people, I think I think a lot of this is bullshit. And people need to really pay attention, man. Oh, op- open your third eye. Yeah, man. <laughs> they talk about a third a third dose that to make sure that you're really fully vaccinated. You know what I mean? Yeah. This shit ain't gonna stop. They're gonna keep shooting you up with shit that they just concocted together. Pause last year. I heard the surgeon say on CSNBC earlier, man, uh, the confusion is that because all three of these vaccines are experimental use. Yeah. First of all, don't you ever say no shit like that to me and think I'm going to let, bro. I don't know, man. Listen, I think the best thing to do, they should have just kept everybody in quarantine. And That's what I said. Kept everything shut down. That's what I shit said. Was cleared, cleared. That's what I said. Y'all don't know what this vaccine is going to do, the effects that it's going to happen to people four or five months down. I still been moving the same way I've been moving, masked up. In my pocket. You know I mean? All that. So, right now. No, everybody right be safe out there. Raising Please. Canaan, episode two. What you thought about it? Amazing, man. I'm getting it. tired of people calling to get rich and die trying. <laughs> <This nigga>. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> Yo, I was gonna say this about the first episode when we spoke about it. Who the fuck you hanging around? These niggas need to shut the fuck up, bro. Like, what the fuck? Is, like, it's a know. show, bro. Again, we I'm gonna say it for the last time because this episode too. It's not. It don't got nothing to do with Curtis Jackson. <laughs> nothing. Just because he played the character of Kanan doesn't mean no. He just intertwining his shit with power to build a. <sighs> oh, he been said it's the power universe. The first book was Ghost. The second book is his son. Yo, what's Kane's last name? Samson. I don't know. It's Stark. I don't even know. It's Kane and Stark. <laughs> Remember Tariq Stark? He was he took his name for a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, see, niggas yeah. don't be paying attention. His name not Jackson or Samson or Branson or nothing. But Kanan. this episode was dope. It was like. It was a build up to the end, the end scene. Yeah, that's what. And it's been almost a week, right, since the episode been up. No, a couple of days. No spoiler so, yeah. alerts. They ain't had. Did they have? He had to do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he should have never what, brought the guns out. Where man. you from? Where you <laughs> from? Oh, I'm yeah, from Brooklyn, New York. You gotta go. It's fucked up. Got him some pussy. Got him in the club. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep your third eye open, son. Yeah, they jump in. I'll tell <laughs> he was about you. to jump in and know that yeah. of them fight. <laughs> That's cool. Nah, don't worry about that. Um, well, I tell Man. you, bro, I don't. I ain't never like too much love. Yo, why you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going that way. I gotta go home. Nah, this uh, this episode is amazing. This episode and, um, was amazing. I think I think I think Fifty Cent needs a lot more credit. For what he is doing in TV right now, man. Yeah, he's doing amazing. his thing as a writer and as a producer and all that shit, man. I still got to watch season two of um, What's that shit called? For Life. For Life, yeah. I got to see what's up with that. BMF man. coming. Power BMF book. is going to be hard too. Yeah. Tommy coming. Porsche. Oh, yeah. You saw that? You saw the preview to that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying shit to see what that like one's a, looking like too, bro. Shit looking like a zoo. But um, other than that, for Don Cole, Yo. it's D-Rick and Hippie. That's right. And y'all already know what we about to do. We about to get up out of here. We'll be back at y'all real, 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 real soon.